Okay. Just giving the general discussion. <laughs> we should say hello or something like that. Yeah. Well, is, is there Martin? Che, chica. And then you have Martin, right? Martik, yeah, kek. Dear viewers. Hey, hello. Okay, we can talk about football. <laughs> I don't want to talk about football right now. Oh. Green Bay Packers beat my Patriots. It's very sad. Battle of twelves. This is impossible. This is. So we just oh, wait on the first event. Christian starts. We're waiting I for people to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go tweet. tweet. Go tweet that we're live. Facebook. <laughs> Oh, we got a donut. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a, yeah. it. represents a poetry in Spanish. In Spanish. I, I don't know any poetry uh, at all. Yeah. So we need a set for poetry. Yeah. Oh, that's he knows mm -hmm. one part of Hamlet and he's happy because of that. I know. <laughs> yeah, and that's all. Thus, conscience makes kind of the We are not to be. That's the question. So, you need to do the AUM logo? Yeah. Uh, on the new walker, it's a pretty nice little section on it. It's about a 15 piece uh, series of different architecture. And then, you know, they have this book about legends and fables. And then, you know, uh, in Armenian and in English. There's a few pretty good documents as well. Set up this place to walk history, almanacs, encyclopedias. I'm not going to get encyclopedias, but I was in there yesterday. The press mobile, legends. What is the phone person for that? Well, please. And I should do this for that. It's really amazing that they only have three undergraduate majors in their university. Hey, we got something here. It's us. <laughs> there are three people watching actually on YouTube. What? <laughs> But me first can? Tuesday. Um, we're going to talk about how volunteering can help build a better future and introduce our programs for the next year. Uh, if you have any questions, you can tweet at us uh, with ask for flight arm hashtag, mention us on Twitter, first right Armenia, and we'll answer. Or you can leave your questions in the comments in YouTube or uh, Hangouts application. So hello, uh, we're here in Yerevan. It's uh, early in the morning, very early. It's snowing outside. We're glad to be here with uh, Patricio. Hello, everybody. Aram and uh, our good friend Armenuhi from uh, Russia. Hey. And um, 
We're going to be streaming uh, for about 30 minutes, uh, talking about our program. And uh, to get started, uh, Birth Rate Armenia is a year-round program. As you can see, we're in the middle of, uh, I mean, the beginning of December. Uh, we have volunteers here in country. We have about 30 volunteers that are here. And um, this uh, event is uh, to um, get uh, some of our viewers and uh, your friends to come uh, participate uh, and be volunteers in 2015. And actually our campaign is volunteering in, in Armenia for 100 days in 2015. So the best way of doing that is actually to talk about uh, the work that's going on here right now and the, what it means to be a volunteer from the viewpoint of volunteers. And uh, we have uh, volunteers from three different countries and um, I guess it's best for us to uh, let them start. And Adam, why don't you take it away? The, our longest term volunteer here. Uh, yeah, so I arrived in country about seven or eight months ago. And for me, after I finished school at the University of Massachusetts, I knew that I wanted to come to Armenia to volunteer, not only to get involved with the medical field here, but to learn about the culture, practice my Armenian, or I should say learn Armenian. Uh, and so that's been a great joy. The, the program is really supportive in terms of homestay, meeting friends here, and the language classes. But the opportunity to volunteer in Armenia isn't uh, a better opportunity than volunteering in another country or in your hometown. The thing that's so special about volunteering in Armenia as an Armenian is you get exposed to a new community that you may not have seen beforehand. For me growing up, I didn't have uh, a strong Armenian community that I interacted with. So it's been amazing coming to Armenia, learning about the healthcare system. I volunteer in two different hospitals. And I first started here with a surgeon and a pathologist, and now I'm doing public health research in Armenia. So for me, it's very rewarding professionally to be here, but I also am being able to give the skills that I uh, developed in my undergraduate uh, for these researchers and these physicians in their own work. So it's both rewarding for me professionally and personally. Well, <clears throat> hi again, Armin Duhi from Moscow. Uh, in Russian? I can, yeah. I can talk in Russian. Okay. Всем привет, я из Москвы. Я уже здесь второй месяц и, надеюсь, буду еще около трех месяцев. Приехала сюда я как журналист после того, как завершила университет в Москве. Я сейчас работаю в двух сферах, близких друг к другу, но немного далеких. Это обучение детей журналистики, тому, как писать, как находить информацию. Мне кажется, это очень важно сейчас для детей, поскольку информация – это ключ ко всему, это ключ к формированию сознание нации, пусть пока еще маленьких детишек, но они будущее, и это важно знать, где они живут, кто они, чем они занимаются и чего они хотят, какая их идея в этой жизни. Другое место – это маркетинговое агентство iNexus, где я занимаюсь продвижением на данный момент интересного и скоро, скоро фильмы, которые появятся на экранах, посвященного 1915 году, то есть посвященного геноциду армян, занимаясь им продвижением. Я считаю, что важно приехать в Армению, будучи армянином или не армянином, участвовать в программе Birthright Armenia или, или быть членом армянского корпуса волонтеров здесь. Потому что сейчас происходят интересные события в Армении. Что-то меняется, и люди это чувствуют, но пока еще не понимают, что. И когда приезжают разные люди с разными идеями, это вдохновляет, это заражает. Ты слышишь это, и тебе хочется участвовать в каждом проекте. Мне кажется, это важно, потому что сейчас мы живем в таком веке, когда многие страны не понимают, какая у них идентичность на данном этапе. Это глобализация, это или их национальный путь отдельный. И э, когда приезжают сюда люди с разными идеями, это потрясающе, потому что даже местное население э, интересуется тем, спрашивает тебя, зачем ты приехал. И когда ты даешь непростой ответ, что это потому, что это есть такая идея, э, 
это заражает людей, которые долгое время были изолированы от мира. Армения из-за своего геополитического положения действительно сейчас изолирована. И когда из вне приезжают такие люди, они дают некий своего рода толчок для понимания того, зачем люди здесь живут до сих пор, почему они не уехали, несмотря на тяжелое положение экономическое, политическое, социальное. И э, мы в каком-то смысле вот эти маленькие импульсы для них и для самих себя, для осознания того, кто мы такие армяне, зачем мы здесь живем, вот, мне кажется, главная идея волонтерства – это нести саму идею, потому что сначала есть идея, а потом есть действие. Вот, ну вот так, наверное, как-то. Патрисио. My name is Patricio. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. In, I just finished university. I'm an art historian and cultural management, and I decided to come to Armenia for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I being from the diaspora, I'm half Armenian, half Italian, but I consider myself Armenian, and I feel a little bit of shame not being able to talk Armenian. So one of the reasons I'm here is to learn Armenian. And also, like the first time I came to Armenia was eight years ago. I came as a tourist and it was just a couple of days, and I think that I need to get to know what Armenian life is, like the daily life here in Armenia. You know, this is a great chance to, to experience that and also to, to expand my professional field. I'm working in the Academy of Fine Arts, giving some lectures about contemporary art and also at the Nalegatsi Art Institute, which is a great institute that has two branches, one here in Yerevan and another in Shushi. They have a, a, a music ensemble, like an orchestra, and that's all. This is my second week here, so I'm still trying to be used to, to this life. I think that the people who are in the world are in America, 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 in um, and it's uh, actually a 12 months uh, program, so you can start whenever and you can leave uh, whenever. Uh, let me ask the, the first question to our volunteer panel. Armenli, uh, before you came, what were some of the concerns that you have about uh, coming to Armenia, about joining Greater Armenia? What were some of the doubts that you had? I'm sure some of our listeners probably have the same uh, concerns. And how did you overcome them? Why did I come here? Mm, interesting. <laughs> like, mm, I differ from other volunteers uh, that I every year come to Armenia and I come here just like a tourist, like a person who have a village here. So a little bit I know about what's Armenia, how, how everything goes here. But for me it was an uh, experience of, for myself, like uh, I want to explore who am I, what can I bring to Armenia. Like, I like Armenian to Armenia. Yes, I live outside like for, for 21 years in Moscow, but at least I feel myself and find my identity uh, only in Armenia. Because when I came here, uh, I just felt that warmness, uh, that need I, like, I have here. Like people need me, maybe not, they don't say, Armenuhi, we need you, come back, <laughs> Armenia, Ripate. No, but I feel like I fit here perfectly, not just because I'm Armenian, because I think like a uh, new generation is uh, like uh, growing up here, the new generation is coming outside from here. And I want to participate in building my country that just have for just 23 years the freedom. And it's a great opportunity to start something new just for myself and for my country. It sounds like really <laughs> big, big deal, but uh, it's important for me to be here. And that idea like impulsed me to come back here to maybe like volunteer here for four months and after find a job and continue <laughs> living here. So I think that's, that was like what made me to come here. Like really easy, easy. 
question from Rudy on Facebook. She wants to know if she can. Hello, Rudy. <laughs> She's interested in volunteering uh, in orphanages mm -hmm. with children, and her husband is interested in uh, working in the field of agriculture. And she wants to know if we have internships in that field. Yeah. Yeah. One of the volunteers that's um, here is working in an orphanage. Uh, mm -hmm. Part, Just part of the children. Week. Exactly. So there are a number of opportunities for orphanages, uh, for agricultural uh, opportunities. I'm not sure currently if there are any volunteers. I mean, currently it's the uh, middle of summer. It's the middle of winter. It's <laughs> difficult. But uh, in general, agriculture is one of the growing sectors in Armenia, mm -hmm. and uh, especially uh, uh, vineyards, grape, uh, winery, winemaking. That's one of the sectors that's really taking off because. There's a concerted effort to make Armenia, uh, put Armenia on the global map of uh, niche uh, niche winemaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now there's there's so many different producers of uh, of uh, canned foods, canned vegetables, canned fruits, uh, and there, there's a lot of uh, new processing plants that are coming online. There's, there's actually even uh, organic farming that's uh, happening here, certified organic farming. So both uh, for Huri and um, uh, and your husband, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. So we would uh, encourage you to write to us uh, via email or Facebook. Uh, let, let's keep the conversation going and let's try to uh, c come up with some more specific details about uh, what are the interesting options. But definitely, yes. Uh, to piggyback, on that the great part about birthright is they have a lot of connections yeah. um, throughout armenia and all the different marses or regions so if you express your interests the things that you want to do the roles and the responsibilities uh, within a job or volunteer placement they'll help find the place that's the best fit for you and if you get involved in one opportunity and it's not um, satisfying it's not exactly what you want they'll work with you to find uh, a new placement that really suits uh, what, what do you want for your experience here? At least that's what I found, and many other volunteers would agree with that. I would think. Like the biggest uh, privilege of uh, doing an internship or volunteering here is that you have access to every niche and field. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. where you want, but what is your specialization at all? Like if they don't have a connection, they will find for you to that, and you will be dissatisfied. Like. So it's the biggest, I think, privilege to do internship here right now in Armenia. Like it's open for everyone in government. I think you will find if you're interested in that in library or I don't know, in medicine, in journalism, every niche is open. That's what's really good about Armenia. It's small and they open for you. Come, come to Armenia. <laughs> Why, why, what would you tell like uh, to uh, South American volunteers? Uh, why, why, what would you tell them about uh, why they would? Uh, it's a good idea for them to come uh, volunteer in Armenia. Well, for most of the South American volunteers, there's most of us are second or third generation of Armenian. So, for example, one of my concerns coming here was the language. I was afraid that I was not going to be able to communicate to anyone. But if your concern is the language, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You can perfectly manage to talk and speak in English. And also you have two times a week uh, Armenian lessons. Mm -hmm. There are different levels. So once you come here, they test you a little bit and they, they can arrange classes for you twice a week. And coming from South America, we are really far from Armenia. And sometimes that makes you feel like less connected with our motherland so this is great opportunity we know that sometimes the airfare ticket is really expensive for us but you have to keep in mind that birthright opportunity it's also uh, birthright also offers the opportunity to to pay for your ticket so money is not an issue you just have to find time to come here and be willing to, to volunteer and spend a great time in, in armenia one of the one of the attractions about Birthday Armenia, as Patricio said, is that financially we make it very affordable from ticket prices to staying with host families. We pay the basic cost of, of, of your stay. 
there's no application fee, participation fee, you know, other kind of mysterious fees that show up in the application. <laughs> there's none of that. So um, with minimal cost, uh, you know, you, you can come participate and you can stay minimum six weeks, volunteer for minimum six weeks, maximum up to one year. And we have volunteers here uh, who like, uh, I don't been here for about eight, eight, nine months now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so it's uh, financially we make it really affordable. Unfortunately, we, we have to, we don't have the formula of finding time for you. You have to do that uh, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of finding time, uh, you want to think about how long, what your goals are for coming to Armenia. If it's for six weeks, four months, or a year. Uh, if you can arrange the time, it'll make your experience the best. So you don't have to leave before uh, you wanted to. You know, for, for me, I wanted to be here for a year, so I managed that time, and I don't feel like I'm rushing to go back home or to stay here. I know that my time here has been great and will continue to be great. But uh, if it, the people that are viewing right now tell us, you know, your backgrounds, where you're from, if you're in university, if you graduated. What uh, what what uh, fields you're interested in volunteering? Let us know who who you are. We have another question from Anna from France. Uh, she has seen on our website that we have different excursions, yeah. and she wanted to know more about that. Where do we go? How does it feel to go on an excursion? Oh, excursions are great, really great. Because Armenia is not a big country, so you can have opportunity to see all parts, the most interesting stuff. And birthright office helps to um, cover you know, some some uh, let's say things. Yeah. Very expensive. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not an expensive, it's cheaper, and the best thing like you do it with really interesting people. You stay in the bus for them for a long time, talk with them like discover each other and it's great. Uh, like uh, a few days ago, we went to Groshawa mm -hmm. in Se Sevan, Dilijan, Sevan. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, we uh, close to Iron Borden, we saw Medri, Kapan, mm -hmm. we saw how pomegranates grow, how it was great, awesome. And before that, we had a really interesting trip to Arta, we participated in mm -hmm. first wine festival there. We saw how it starts, like, uh, and it's unbelievable. Armenians, um, if we talk about nature, so different. So somewhere it's mountains, like uh, bold mountains, somewhere forests. Uh, you're never gonna be bored on the road. So you have people, you have nature, you have our good friend Hike, who's gonna make you <laughs> laugh whole day, whole trip. So it's interesting. And every week, uh, oh, Mostly every week we go on excursion and they are really cool. Like you really want to participate, even if you see something in Armenia, you want to go again and see it with people here from here. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Even uh, <clears throat> from the first excursion that you go on when you get here. So you get here on a Wednesday. The first excursion will be on a Saturday, and it's it's amazing how open this group is to meeting new people because. You know, the term that Birthright uses is it's a revolving door. You don't come in and then you leave. It's always here for you. And the volunteers are really like that. We're <clears throat> open to new people. People come back in to visit for a few weeks. So from the first day that you're here, you're going to feel welcome. You'll come into the office. You'll talk to Sevan, some of the other staff, and you'll go and see the city. And usually there'll be a volunteer or two in the office that will go on the um, city tour with you. And, it's the excursions are with great people. You will be like tired of talking with so much people, <laughs> but they're great, everyone. Like, because people who come to you, they have like similar ideas, similar concerns, and you can, there is always something to talk about. Like, there are really special people here, and it's gonna surprise you because you won't accept, expect that to see here in Armenia. So come, um, excursions. <laughs> um. what, are some, what are some of your plans, Patrice or Aram, after you have done here? And how, how, how is this experience kind of possibly helping with, your, with the next phase of what, what you're going to be doing? 
um, this is my second week here, as I said before, so I still don't know what, what I'm going to do after this. Uh, I may extend my, my, my birthright experience for a few months, because I'm only going to be till March, and everyone is trying to convince me to, to stay a little bit more, so I'm still thinking about that, and that, that's going to, to be my, my future. Uh, so, you know, I argue with uh, volunteers and uh, local Armenians about this point. Armenia has a lot of possibility for you. The, in terms of the opportunity, uh, maybe not so much. You can't come here and work for a large corporation that's going to give you great training. But there are a lot of sectors that need growth in Armenia, and so there's strong uh, possibilities in Armenia. And for me, I'll be ending in four months and I'll be going back to the U.S. applying to medical schools. And I know some of the weak points in the medical um, curriculum that I've seen here. And for me, you know, it's a, it's a life goal to help improve the practical skills that surgeons and physicians have in Armenia. Something as simple as practicing uh, surgical skills before you do it on a patient. That's something that Armenia hasn't integrated fully into their medical education. So. I like reading research articles. So how do I bring research that's happening in the States and in Europe, Australia to Armenia in a very basic sense. Uh, it's not something that's gonna happen over a year or two, but five, 10 years. I know that I'll always be connected to Armenia in that setting. Now, the first month that I was here, the first two months, three months, I had no idea that that's what I would wanna do. But after five, six, seven months, you start to see, okay, this is something that Armenia needs, it's something I'm interested in, and it works. Oh, me. Uh, <laughs> well, I like because of uh, Russia and Armenia has really strong connection. Uh, the door for me is off, always open. It doesn't matter for me, like, leave. I'll be back in Moscow, or I'll be in Yerevan or somewhere else in Armenia. Uh, I'll always on the road, kind of. But I'm thinking about... Uh, Maybe not moving here, but uh, living in two places at the same time. Because my profession left me to do that, to work from Moscow or from work in, from uh, Yerevan. And I don't know, really, as Saram said, you don't know what you're going to do uh, even after two or three months. You need more time because to be involved in Armenian life, to understand what's going on in social and political in economy here, it's a difficult time for Armenia and interesting time for Armenia because it's reforming, everything is developing. Uh, believe me, but you will never get as good job back home as you can get here. This is always opportunity because people are open for new creative, uh, intelligent people, even if you're young, it doesn't matter, maybe you're 23. Like back home, I could get really good job if I'll be 27 or 26 or older. But here, I'm young, they need that young brains. And it's really interesting and it's mm -hmm. cool for Armenia, what I think. So you, you always can find like something for you. A lot of people will, Armenians, local Armenians will complain you like, why are you coming here asking why? Why you do that? Come on, you stupid, go back home. <laughs> like that. But um, yeah, people sometimes, we, we, uh, like, country need that uh, enth enthusiastic who can work for no money, just for idea. And that's what move everything, I think. Mm -hmm. So come, come, come. <laughs> Actually, you see this uh, poster behind us here, yeah. all the faces. We did this uh, when we had the, when we had our 500 volunteer. We, we prepared this. Sometime next uh, March or so, we're going to have our 1,000 volunteers. So we're counting on you to maybe be that 1,000 volunteer. Uh, next year, we expect to have about 250 to 300 volunteers participate from again all over the world. Right now we have a volunteer from the farthest place uh, to Armenia, even farther than Buenos Aires is uh, Sydney, Australia. So we have a volunteer, Salvo, who's here from Sydney. And uh, there was a volunteer who was here from Los Angeles last year. And when she, when, uh, when she left, uh, 
she decided to return to Armenia to start longer term projects. And when we asked her, you know, what is it that uh, brings you back? Because you have you have a very nice uh, you have a very nice job in Los Angeles with the fire department. And uh, she gave a very very interesting answer. She said, um, you know, I love my job. I love love my colleagues. I love doing what I what I do. You know, saving people's lives. But I realized that you know, when I'm not there, there's you know someone else who's taking my position, and uh, you know that job is getting done. But what I'm doing over here, I recognize that uh, some of the things that I do, no one else is doing, or no one else has the skills to be doing. And people are so willing to learn from from my skills and my experience. So Armenia is really a place where people can come and engage and you know, share skills and in return uh, learn learn a lot. Uh, uh, you know, several years ago we had a number of volunteers that actually applied to very competitive uh, universities in different uh, parts of the world. And uh, they, they say that the reason that they got accepted was because of their time in Armenia, their volunteers in Armenia, because people look at the resume and the application and they say, what is this? You know, what, 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 what is it? Yeah. And that becomes a topic of conversation. So you benefit Armenia and Armenia benefits you in, in return. It's not just the, the line on the resume. What's so interesting about your experience in Armenia is in the beginning, you're just going to be learning, learning, learning. We're all learning about this country. But then after some time, you really see how you can bring about positive change to Armenia. And that's what's so interesting for employers or admissions councils is not only your story here, but how they can help you bring success and advancement to Armenia. It gets people excited to hear about the ideas you have in Armenia. Whether it's friends, colleagues, admissions, it's a, it's a foreign place for all of us. Uh, and people like to hear about new opportunities. Like back home, like where places we are from, the, a lot of people, the connection is not really good. In Armenia, in Yerevan, you're going to walk somewhere and find, oh, this is my friend, hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. Again, you go to shop, oh, hello, how are you? Again, no connection, like everyone knows about each other and that's so warm warming it's so like like lifting you up because every you know everyone everyone knows you everyone like my friends my friends my friends knows about me how he knows he knows it's our mini it's Yerevan come on everyone knows each other and that's so great because you can spend your time with diff totally different people from different fields and it's so great like in home you will never have so big community like network and Armenia is really network because it's like a big village, uh -huh. but it's uh -huh. so cool village. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching us live. You can still tweet us your questions with the hashtag passport right now and mention us. You can leave your questions on our Facebook page on in the comments on YouTube or here. We'll answer them. Um, Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dina, for organizing all of this. Mm -hmm. okay. And thanks to all the volunteers for being here. And uh, the benefit of being here right now is that we're going to go and have some breakfast because the day has started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. if you want to join us, you'll have breakfast with us too. And also, if you want to ask questions to any of us, if you have a similar yeah. feel, feel free to send that message to Birthright asking um, you know, that guy that was doing something in medicine, yeah. I have a question for him. or anything like that, and we're available to talk or put you in touch with people that are in the same field as you. We need new poster. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Patricia does speak Spanish, too. Yeah. Hable <laughs> español. Ciao. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.